Hello everybody, my name is Luke Marr and this is Hot Lim Mode and today on Hot Lim Mode we are going to be finishing up the top 10 most important Alexander McQueen shows to know. But before we get into the video, if you guys want to learn about the first five most important Alexander McQueen shows to know, click on the screen now. Also, if you guys are looking for a channel that talks about fashion in the most fun, sassy, bitchy, analytical way, this is it. So you can go down below, hit the subscribe button and turn on my post notifications. Like what do you have to lose? Also, if you guys like these kinds of videos, definitely let me know with a like and you can see more from me on Instagram at Hot Mode. I post some pretty poppin' memes and my Instagram stories are always fire, so check it out. And now let's get right back into the collections to now. Number six. Number 13, Spring Summer 1999. McQueen's fashion shows are legendary, as you already know, but none created an iconic image that defined McQueen's work the way that Number 13 did. The show was titled Number 13 because it was the 13th show that McQueen had put on. And I wouldn't be shocked if McQueen found the superstition around the Number 13 in Western culture is very interesting. McQueen took inspiration from the Victorian arts and crafts movement that centered around the loss of human creation during a period after the Industrial Revolution. Those who started the movement found excessive ornamentation and impractically made pieces to be ridiculous, which might have been a jab at John Galliano, whose pieces McQueen found to be more costume than clothing. McQueen might have resented Galliano as McQueen was still working at Givenchy, which was often overshadowed by Galliano's Dior. The McQueen regulars like his tailored suits, his lace work, dramatic construction, and sheer tops appeared while he introduced new elements like tanned leather that only Leatherface doing drag would ever wear, oversized tops, and what seemed to be like natural resource knitwear and embroidery. So when I say potato sac couture, I mean potato sac couture. But the reason number 13 is on the list is because McQueen introduced numerous pieces in ways that can only be described as performance art. Angel wings created out of molded wood, which are like a sculpture when seen in real life, were breathtaking. And if you can reach the Metropolitan Museum in New York before the Heavenly Bodies exhibit closes, go so you can see these beautiful wings. I literally was shooketh all day after I saw them. McQueen also created dresses that used the molded wood as skirts. And then he showcased five dresses which sparkled as the models displayed them through caged heads or prolonged skirts. The piece de resistance was a strapless bouffant dress which model Shalom Harlow wore as the dormant machines in the middle of the runway came to life. Shalom spun on a platform and shook with fear as the machine spewed black and neon yellow paint onto the dress and herself. McQueen had created a performance art piece while using clothing as his canvas. He had broken through the fashion world into a full-fledged artist. His name was everywhere as the press fell in love with the collection. McQueen wasn't just a designer anymore, he was a star. Number 7. Voss Spring Summer 2001. While Voss is another iconic show, it definitely had underlying meaning in a similar way to La Poupée. After four years of being Givenchy's creative director, McQueen decided he wanted to focus on nature instead of the glitz and glam of Parisian haute couture. The show's inspiration was based on nature and the elements mixed with photographer Joel Peter Witkin's photo Sanitarium, which bled into the set design. The audience walked into a room with a two-way mirror that they could see into, but models could not see out of. Models also walked with large bandages on their heads, meant to symbolize brain trauma, and the lighting was sterile with rubber pads playing into the sanitarium theme. McQueen expanded on his tailoring capabilities with jumpsuits, skirt suits, and dresses. He played with feathers by attaching them to pants and creating over-the-top dresses as well. He even created a dress out of razor clamshells, which was used as a metaphor for the fashion cycle. He found the shells on the beach and then created a dress from them, exactly how a designer finds inspiration and creates from it as well. But when the model destroyed the dress on the runway, it was McQueen's view of how good work was destroyed in the name of fashion. After the last look returned backstage, a box one would have assumed was just a part of the set fell apart, and as the glass walls shattered, a woman looking identical to the one in Witkin's photo laid on a bench nude as butterflies scattered around the runway. It was McQueen's way of 
saying that while someone might have felt beautiful on the outside, they might not always feel as beautiful on the inside. McQueen had delivered another stunning collection that doubled as a performance piece. It was after Voss that McQueen sneakily removed himself from Givenchy and the grips of LVMH, where he had never felt appreciated, instead selling a majority stake of his company to the newly formed Gucci Group. Under the Gucci Group, McQueen could continue to create collections like Voss and maintain creative freedom without having to deal with the business aspect of fashion, which he hated. Number 8. The Horn of Plenty Fall Winter 2009 the Horn of Plenty seems to be the beginning of the end for McQueen. It is believed that the collection was another middle finger to the fashion industry, while simultaneously being a retrospective of McQueen's work. The name The Horn of Plenty was the name of the pub where Jack the Ripper's final victim was last seen, while in the middle of the set sat a pile of garbage, which were references to each of McQueen's well-known shows. The opening look was a riff on Dior's new look, and played with the Prince of Wales check, a reference to his statement that while working on Savile Row, McQueen had embroidered I am a C-U-N-T into one of Prince Charles's suits. He made a checked skirt suit which felt reminiscent of Karl Lagerfeld's Chanel and a cocoon coat that seemed to mirror Balenciaga. And while taking jabs at industry bigwigs, McQueen still managed to make beautiful clothes that shone a spotlight on the fashion industry's never-ending desire for something new. McQueen also referenced his past collections like The Birds with black and red bird prints and feathered looks that could have belonged to a numerous amount of shows. The Horn of Plenty was McQueen's last stand against an industry that had battered and bruised him almost every single step of the way. The collection was his second to last completed collection, and mixed with the message behind it, I can't help feel that it had a deeper meaning. Number 9. Plato's Atlantis, Spring Summer 2010. The last show McQueen ever presented was a whirlwind of technology, nature, and McQueen's brilliance that left all that had watched it in awe. McQueen decided to live stream the show with Nick Knight, the famed photographer and founder of Show Studio, because he felt bored with the same fashion industry audience and never felt that he was an exclusive designer. McQueen was one of the first designers to embrace the internet both for his research and for its commercial capabilities. Plato's Atlantis mixed Darwin's evolution theories with the concern of global warming and water rising, resulting in humanoid reptilian clothing and shoes. The models descended down the runway with minimal but alien-esque hair and makeup while wearing fitted dresses and Saurian prints. The construction of pieces were complicated, but unlike the tailoring of his early work, which for many meant a new era of McQueen. McQueen also introduced a new shoe called the Armadillo Boot, which mixed his gruesome and torturous style with the technique of a point ballet shoe. It was simply another revolutionary piece McQueen so effortlessly invented. Many believe that this was McQueen's best show to date, and seeing as it was his last, it would be hard to debate with the sentiment the show carried. Number 10, Autumn Winter 2010. Notice the last show we discussed doesn't have a name, as the collection hadn't been completed. On February 2nd, 2010, McQueen's beloved Mother Joyce, who had been there for Lee from the very start, had passed after a hard battle with cancer. And unfortunately, nine days later, McQueen had committed suicide in his London home. While fashion mourned the loss of one of its true creatives, Sarah Burton and her team had to tie up the loose ends of the collection as they grieved. The collection had no formal title, unlike the majority of McQueen shows, but was deemed Angels and Demons based on his tweet that read, Hell's Angels and Prolific Demons, just days before he passed. This show wasn't an actual show, but a presentation of the 16 pieces for no more than 10 people at a time in Paris. The opening look in a bold form-fitting red bodice with intricate gold embroidery and pleated skirt gave the show a feeling of tortured holiness. The majority of the collection was showed in gold, red, and famous Catholic artwork prints while McQueen's famous tailoring came through in a gold two-piece suit. His love of Asia and its beauty demonstrated itself in a red and gold Tibetan tiger kimono. The finale look is a bodice of gold feathers with a white mermaid tail skirt that floated slowly into the room as well. 
McQueen's former assistant, Sebastian Pons, described the collection as a requiem, and there really isn't a better way to describe it. No one will ever know if this was the last of his work McQueen ever set out to create, but the holy yet somber collection perfectly described him. He was untouchable, a god to many, but it didn't come without a cost. Shakespeare, the writer of the quote McQueen had tattooed on his body, wrote, My griefs lie all within, and these external manners of laments are mere shadows to the unseen grief which swells with silence in the tortured soul. There lies the substance. I just find that quote to really describe McQueen in the perfect way. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you guys learned a little something. I've had a really good time doing these videos and I'm very excited to see the documentary, which again comes out on the 20th. I will see you guys next week. Again, thanks so much for watching and TTYL.